You have to wonder at times what you're doing out there. Over the years, I've given myself a thousand reasons to keep running, but it always comes back to where it started. It comes down to self-satisfaction and a sense of achievement. Steve Prefontaine, college and Olympic runner. I believe in running. I believe in going the extra mile. Literally. Earlier this summer, I spent most of my days with a pull-up bar and a dumbbell. One early August morning, 15 pounds lighter, I decided I was ready for a change in routine. I heard that my dad was training for the Boston Marathon. Boston Marathon? This caught my attention and somewhat puzzled me because before he hit the P90X workout regimen, exercise was the last priority in his life. That morning, footsteps crept through my room. I see the rugged beard lean over my face. My dad whispered, Blake, get up. Let's go for 10 miles. I know you haven't been doing a lot to train for cross country, but this will be good for you. 10 miles? At my age? This guy is nuts. I took a few seconds to think about it more. What if I could do it? I envisioned myself crossing the 10 mile marker. Sure. Within 5 minutes, the rubber on my shoes was striking the black, cold concrete. Mile 1. This is easy peasy. Only 10 of these? No problem. My dad tells me that we are going all the way to downtown. I look up at the buildings and skyscrapers. Uh oh. Maybe I'm not up for this after all. The first mile ended with ease. I am slowly getting used to this pattern. Left, right, left, right, left. I was feeling strong, and I now had two miles under my belt. My dad and I chat back and forth for a long while. After a minute of the pace slowly accelerating, I asked my dad why we were speeding up. Apparently, marathon pace hurts. Mile three. This was the hardest mile yet. After warming up and getting used to the pace, my dad sped up. My chest slowly inflated and deflated, and I could see the condensation appear with every breath I took. My dad assured me that if I was starting to get scared about breathing too hard, it was just my brain telling me to stop even though my body could do more than my synapses told my body. Mile 4. We finally reached a pace where we both could keep a constant rhythm. If my synapses ever told my body to stop, it was then. Why did I keep moving? At that point in the run, I had no idea. We were coming up on Lakewood, and our rhythm ended momentarily for a triumphant swig of water. Almost halfway there. Mile 5. This pace was comforting. My body finally convinced my brain that I could do it. Pain egressed from my core and legs. My dad explained this phenomenon as a runner's high or an endorphin rush. The physician explained to me that my body released a hormone uh, known as an endorphin throughout my bloodstream. It released pain and is considered a natural antidepressant. I feel confident as the central expressway comes into view. Mile 6. We entered the Katy Trail. The endorphin still overpowered any pain that I might have been experiencing. Bridges passed under my feet with ease. How is it that I was not tired? I was probably more tired at the beginning of the run as my dad dragged me out of bed on an early Saturday morning. My feet started to ache, but I kept going because, well, it was all I could do. Mile 7. Glimpses of green and silver buildings passed over the trees I ran by. I was close, and I knew it. I was also exhausted. Every step came with the thought, how much farther until water? My endorphin rush left me, and I was running on pure willpower. Muscles contracted, muscles contracted. I thought I saw the end of the trail, but it seemed to reveal to be just a long bend in the trail. When is it over? Mile 8. As I squinted, I finally saw the end of the trail. I can do this. Almost home. When I finally came past the last loop, I kept my eyes forward. I guess this is the key to being successful at anything. Looking forward. Because if you are only looking backward, you'll never see how far you could have gone. Possibilities lie in the future, not in the past. Mile 9. The pain rushing in my muscles and lungs was a small pittance compared to the awesome sense of achievement of finally seeing downtown Dallas. My dad told me I had to run into Victory Plaza. I know why they call it Victory Plaza now. Mile 10. When I saw the AT&T sign, I let myself accelerate until I was running a full-on sprint. 
Snow underneath my feet and pain within my lungs, but I reached it. And I threw my hands in the air, celebrating myself. Why was I so proud of myself? I understood that many people run this distance or farther every day. Why was I proud? In the time I could have spent sleeping, I accomplished something that I never in my dreams believed I could do. I learned that I, Blake Bordelon, could do anything I truly work at, be it running or math or basketball or science. You can only achieve while looking forward. I believe in running. I believe that running allows one to test your body to the fullest capacity. I believe that running shows me determination, hard work, and devotion can all lead toward the highest level of success and achievement. Possibility. This, I believe.